This is a mechanical keyboard, and we all know they come in different sizes. This is your standard full-size keyboard with all the key Oh, wait, no, not this one. This is your standard full-size keyboard with all the keys, and the sizes can vary from 80 to 60 and even 40%. But what about a 1% keyboard? Huh? As an April Fool's joke, Corsair made a gaming keyboard with 1% layout named K1RGB, promising best performance and unlimited customization. It really was a one-of-a-kind. But I have a problem with this. They're calling this the world's smallest mechanical keyboard. And as someone who is somewhat of an expert on small things, I'm thinking we can make one a lot better. And by better, I of course mean a lot smaller. Like, we can probably fit this entire circuit into this single switch. So in this video, we're going to build a 1% mechanical keyboard that's going to blow the K1 RGB out of the water in terms of size and include additional features like wireless connectivity and battery power. Now all this engineering work means we're going to be sitting on a chair for a very long time. And thanks to this new chair from FlexiSpot, we don't have to work in discomfort or have back pain after a long circuit design and coding session. More on them later. Now although we're making the world's smallest mechanical keyboard, we also want to make it functional and useful where we can use it as a regular keyboard, access different shortcuts, and even prank people using it. But for the very first task, we're gonna do some research and check out our competition before we start designing our tiny mechanical keyboard. Because remember, we're trying to make the world's smallest mechanical keyboard, so all the little details will matter. After some intense researching through the online archives, we see that there are several past keyboard projects with 1% layout, and for some of them, you can purchase online. But take a look at these disgusting things. Giant rubber snakes connected to these keyboards. Nuh uh, we don't want any of this. We want everything wireless. Also, I'm not trying to body shame here, but all these keyboards are thick, which again is not what we want. We want our keyboards to be as slim as possible, where all you can see is only the mechanical switch. Yes, just this beautiful and completely naked switch. So we now have our circuit design requirements. We need the circuit to behave as a keyboard detecting button presses, and everything needs to be wireless and battery powered. Bruh. Oh, and of course, it needs RGB LEDs. That's extremely important. But most importantly, everything we just mentioned needs to somehow magically fit into this single keyboard switch. Come on, get in there, you stupid circuit. Okay, this project is getting way too complex to finish. Sorry guys, this is the end of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Oh wait, hold up guys, look what I found. I have this past project that we can use as a starting point. I made this tiny keyboard with an Arduino compatible board and it does exactly what we want. It even has RGB LEDs. Okay, well now it looks like we're done. Thanks for watching everyone. Please leave a like and subscribe. This is the end of the video. Raw. Look at this gross looking thing, just flopping around. We don't want any of that. We want Bluetooth with zero wires. So how can we turn this tiny mechanical keyboard wireless and battery powered? While taking a look back at our tiny RC car video, we've used this microcontroller which if you remember is the brain of our system, but this one has Bluetooth communication as well as an ARM processor to handle pretty much any task we throw at it. <coughs> Check it out. I was able to place the entire Bluetooth microcontroller along with all the necessary components fit into this tiny area just to see how small we can get. And this is only on one sided PCB. So we know we can get even way smaller than this if we use both sides. Now the downside is that this microcontroller is a lot more complex to deal with for both hardware and software when compared with these popular and simpler Arduino microcontrollers. But we'll let future Jess Kim deal with that later. We now have a list of circuit components we need to implement, but we haven't figured out how we're going to fit the entire circuit onto this tiny thing. I mean, look, there's barely any room for this keyboard switch. We now have some additional room on our keyboard switch, where we can shape the circuit board like a tiny t-shirt and slide it in like this. Now all that's left is to somehow place all these components onto this tiny PCB. Bruh. I think this actually is the smallest circuit board I've ever designed in my entire life. We're talking about a PCB that's smaller than Nibble's brain. I didn't think it was possible. Ooh, that's kind of small. So designing the PCB will be time consuming and a challenge for sure, where I'll probably be sitting on my chair for a very long time. Luckily, I'm using the C7 office chair from FlexiSpot, which provides optimal comfort and prevents back pain. Now the C7 is one of the most customizable chairs out there. It comes with adjustable headrest, Rest, along with highly adjustable armrests. There's also what FlexiSpot calls an adaptive dynamic lumbar support, which again is adjustable, but my favorite feature has to be the recline and relax mode. 
Now because the C7 is so highly customizable, it's suitable for everyone, and it comes in mesh version as well as foam version. They also have the C5 chair, but FlexiSpot recommends the C7 for all professionals and freelancers. It has a 30-day free return policy and comes with 10-year warranty. So use my code JUSTKIM to get $30 off, and check out the link down in the description to try the C7 chair today. So while I was talking about the C7 chair, I finished up the circuit board schematic and layout, which contains all the parts we've previously talked about. This includes the battery charger, the RGB LED lighting, ribbon cable connector for programming and debugging, and most importantly, the Bluetooth ARM microcontroller with a 2.4 GHz antenna circuit. Yes, this tiny thing is actually an antenna for Bluetooth communication. Huh? And for testing and changing the keyboard behavior, I added an extra button. And with video magic, the manufactured circuit boards arrived in seconds. Now these are super tiny and this is definitely the smallest PCB I've ever designed in my career. They're 13 millimeters by 12 millimeters, as small as Nibble's brain and Loki's brain too. Can't forget about him. So we have our circuit boards, but now we have to attach these components onto it. If you thought designing the PCB was a challenge, you clearly didn't pay attention to how small these components are. Just to give you an idea of how hard soldering these components are going to be, let me show you the 0402 capacitor we need to solder onto the circuit board. Bruh. And this is an 0201 capacitor that we also need to solder onto the same circuit board. What the hell is even that? Yeah, they're super tiny. Now luckily, I'm very good at handling small things, especially with these tweezers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm obviously talking about the electronics and my dick. All right, enough talk. Let's get to soldering. Okay, it's looking good. By the way, the components were so tiny that they sometimes just flew away while trying to solder them. <coughs> After everything was soldered, this is where my real struggle started. I plugged everything together to provide power and start programming, but I noticed there was a short between the power and ground, which is never a good thing since it can cause all sorts of damage or entertainment. And one, two, three, four. After some debugging, I realized that our microcontroller was not properly soldered, so I fixed it and tried to reprogram our firmware. But as you may have already guessed, there were still some issues. Why can't you just tell me what your issue is? Why are you being like this? I spent hours trying to figure this out and then remember these connectors have metal contacts on both the top and bottom sides. So as a wild guess, I flipped the cable and the issue is gone. I can now talk to our processor and program it. Okay, now we're done fixing all the issues. Wait up. Uh, minutes. Why do I hear boss battle music? Several days later. To save some time, I'm going to skip the other issues I had to fix, but just know that it was a long, painful process investigating each individual problem and dealing with soldering mistakes and bugs in my code. Now, what didn't give me any problems were the circuit boards manufactured by PCBWay. They did a fantastic job, as always, making these tiny four-layer boards for this 1% mechanical keyboard project. Thanks, PCBWay. So with our completed tiny keyboard circuit, I powered it on, paired it to our PC via Bluetooth, and our keyboard is finally working. Oh my god, yes, it's beautiful. I can type on this all day. So now that the circuit is tested and verified, we just have to finish up the final assembly. This includes inserting our circuit board into the mechanical switch, attaching a toggle switch for turning the power on and off, and finally, attaching our rechargeable battery to the circuit... Wait a minute... Why am I seeing way less than 3 volts on this battery? Is our battery dead? Oh no, what about the rest of the tiny batteries that I have? They're all dead! Yeah, looks like all of the small batteries that I have in my storage are fully depleted, and I can't revive them to power our wireless keyboard. Unless I use one of these giant batteries, well luckily, there's always express shipping. And it only costed 50 times more than what I usually pay. Yay! Now I'm going to do something that you should never try at home. I'll be removing this battery safety circuit to make it even smaller, and sort of just tape the battery onto the side, and the final assembly is complete. Now it's time for the fun part, where we actually get to use our new tiny creation. For the first test, let's turn ordinary objects into a keyboard. Looking at this, you may think it's a regular coffee mug, but if you look closely at the cup, you can see that there's actually a crack at the top. Also, I've attached our wireless keyboard onto it. So now, whenever you drink your coffee, you can also work at the same time to increase your overall efficiency and please our corporate overlords.
This brings us to the next use case for a tiny keyboard, where you can remotely prank people using it. Imagine you're in a library and you pair the keyboard with a random computer. After some unsuspecting stranger decides to use the computer for work, and they start typing up a Word document with the press of a button, you can mess around with what they're typing. Now the last example I'm going to show you is something that I think is really useful. Because this keyboard can be programmed to type any combination of keys, including special keys like Shift, Tab, and Control, you can easily access shortcuts for any software that you're using. One prime example is quickly hiding whatever was on your browser using a single button. And the best part is, you can do it from pretty much anywhere in your home. By the way, I was planning to make multiple of these 1% keyboards and replace my regular keyboard to play games and use it for productivity stuff. But as you already saw from before, I ran out of batteries after the first build. I did order more LiPo batteries to build more of these guys for a future video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. So now that we have our 1% mechanical keyboard, and after all that testing, how does it compare to the Corsair's K1 RGB? Is our new keyboard a lot better than the K1 RGB? Well, it depends on how you define better. I mean, for sure our keyboard takes the crown for being the smallest and the lightest mechanical keyboard. However, However, there are some key functionalities that we didn't put into our keyboard that exists on the K1 RGB, like the audio aux cable connector on the side and the volume rocker in the front. But on the other hand, we've put features that the K1 RGB doesn't have, like the Bluetooth wireless connectivity and being battery powered with the on and off switch. You lose some, you win some. One other point I'd like to mention is that the RGB LED feature of our new keyboard wasn't shown in the video. That's because I'm still working on the PWM code to control the LED brightness, but the basic red, green, and blue functionalities are working. Lastly, I want to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and sending over the C7 office chair. I've been using this for a few months now as my daily driver, and I have to say, it's a really comfortable chair. Assembly was straightforward, and I've been using this chair for pretty much everything, from scripting and editing my videos, all the way to designing my circuit boards, 3D modeling, and programming. And the amount of customization that comes with this chair is quite amazing. You really can't go wrong with the C7, which comes with a 10-year warranty, and you can try it out without any worry, knowing that it comes with a 30-day free return policy. You can use my promo code, just Kim to get additional $30 off your purchase. Links are in the description. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.